Hello everybody. In this video I want to walk through a few examples that are multi-step area problems. You got the basic ones down. Let's add a few steps. Because nothing in this world is that simple. Anyway, our learning goal is that you'll be able to think through a problem-solving process to calculate the information that you need to solve an area problem. Okay, so before we get into the first example, here's some questions to ask yourself. This will help you find the information that you need. First question is what formula or method fits this situation? Since we're looking at area, it might be helpful to look at your area formula chart. Although I encourage you as best you can to memorize these so you don't have to look at it too much. Alright, so after that, ask yourself what info are you lacking in order to use that formula or method? Then, how can you find that information? Okay, let's see how these work in practice. By the way, this set of questions doesn't just apply to area problems, but it can apply to any kind of multi-step problem. Determine what method you're going to use, what information you need, and how you can get it. Okay, here's our first example. We're going to find the area of this figure, and I copied the questions from the previous slide right there. Okay, so, hmm, let's look at the first one. What formula or method fits this situation? Well, the shape is a parallelogram, so I should probably use the parallelogram area formula, which is area equals base times height. Okay, that was easy. Next question. What information are, am I lacking to use this formula or method? Okay, well, what we need for this formula is the base and the height. So, we have the base. That's 22. But the height? Nah, I don't got that. So that's what I'm going to need to find. That's the information that I'm lacking. So the last question is how can I find that information? How can I find what the height is? Okay, well if you look, we've got this right triangle here. Kind of convenient. I, ha I know two sides on the right triangle. I'm looking for another side. So hopefully you're thinking, oh, we should use the Pythagorean theorem. And if you're really thinking about it, you'll notice that this is a 7, 24, 25 right triangle. It's one of our Pythagorean triples. Ah, oh, so that makes my life even easier. So I know that the height is 24. Okay, now that I know that, now I can just plug in the formula. Now it's just a basic area problem. So area is equal to 22 for the base, 24 for the height. Multiply those, I get area equals 528. The units would be centimeters times centimeters, which is centimeters squared. Hey, not too bad. All right, let's look at another one. Here, we're going to look at the area, determine the area for this triangle. Here's our questions. Let's get started. First, what formula or method are we going to use? Mm, okay, so it's a triangle, so that means I need to do area equals one-half base times height. Okay? Now, what information am I lacking to use this formula or method? Once again, we have the base. But the height? Mm, I don't know. And they didn't even draw it in for us. I gotta draw it. How rude. Okay, so I drew, I drew in the height there. And obviously we're gonna need to find that. So how are we gonna find it? Well, once again, we have this lovely right triangle. In it, I know an angle and a side, and I'm looking for a side. That should tell you we're probably going to use trig. That should be helpful. All right. Well, I need to figure out which trig function to use. So, let's see. There's my hypotenuse. What I'm looking for is the opposite. So, that means I should use the sine formula. Okay. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. All right. So, let's see, sine of 25, that's the angle, opposite is h, and hypotenuse is 7. Okay, remember what to do next? If I put sine of 25 in the calculator, I get approximately 0.423 in a lot of other decimal places. Remember to keep all those decimal places in your calculator while you go forward. I need to get h by itself, so I'll multiply both sides by 7. 
So 7 times the dec long decimal I had in the calculator is 2.958. Okay, so that's my height. So now I can plug in. So we've got area equals 1 half times 10, which is the base, and 2.958, which is my height. Remember, again, keep all of the decimal places when you plug it in in the calculator. On your paper, you can write down just the three decimal places, but in the calculator, use all of them. Okay, then plug that in, and I get 14.792 units would be inches times inches is inches squared. All right, one more. This one's a little different. Okay, we got a circle that has a circumference of 8 pi feet. We want to calculate the area of the circle. Okay, so here's the questions that we need to ask. And, uh, hmm. They didn't even draw a picture. Double rude. Okay, well, I guess I'll need to draw a circle. There. I bet my circle looks better than yours. Well, it's kind of unfair because I have a little magic circle drawing tool thingy. But anyway, uh, so we know the circumference is 8 pi feet. All right, so what formula or method fits the situation? I want the area of the circle, so that would be area equals pi r squared. Okay, and what do I need to find? The only thing I need for this formula is the radius. And, of course, I don't have it. Great. Oh, but well, we can find it, though. Okay, so how am I going to get it? Well, the thing is, they only gave us one piece of information. They gave us the circumference. Chances are we probably got to use it. Um, okay, well, let's look at the circumference formula. Ah, okay, C equals 2 pi r. There's an r in that formula, so that means I could solve for it. Great. Okay, so circumference is 8 pi, so I can plug that in. And hey, you notice how there's a pi on both sides? So since both pi's are multiplied, I could divide by pi and cancel them out. That's nice. So now I have 8 equals 2 times r, divide both sides by 2, and I get r is 4 feet. Yay. Okay, I'll go ahead and put that on the picture. All right, so... Now I can plug into the area formula. So that would be area equals pi times 4 feet squared. So if I do 4 squared, that would give me 16 pi feet squared. Remember, in terms of pi, means you're going to leave pi in the answer. And then we also want it to the nearest thousandth square foot. So that's three decimal places you can see there. So I plug it in the calculator, and I get 50.265 square feet. All right. So, sounds good. I'll see you later, all you inferior circle drawers. Pardon me while I leave on my ego trip. I'll see you in class.